I made a video a while back where I was messing with some friends over TeamSpeak by playing sound effects from DayZ. A lot of people wanted me to include a download link with all the sound effects files, but unfortunately I can't do that because it's actually illegal to distribute those files from DayZ. But what I can do is show you guys how to extract the sounds yourselves. So here's an example of one of the sound clips I have. And so you can see on TeamSpeak, whenever I talk or whenever I play a sound effect, it lights up so it's coming across. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. The first step is extracting these sound effects from DayZ. So to do that, you're going to need two things. You're going to want to download this, which is called uh, PBO Manager. The link's in the description. This will extract sounds from the PBO files from DayZ. The other tool you're going to want to use is this one. The link's also in the description. It allows you to convert these sound files to WAV files. So first off, get PBO Manager, install it, open it up. Here it is. This is what it looks like. I'm going to navigate to my DayZ installation folder, which is probably going to be under your C drive, program files, Steam, Steam apps, common, and then you'll see DayZ. This is your DayZ folder. In the add-ons folder, this is where most of the content is. In this folder, you have a lot of 3D models and other assets. What you're going to want to scroll down to is sounds. These are all the sound effects from DayZ. We've got some sounds for Armor 2, some sounds from the mod, and some other new sound files. So these are .pbo's, and PBO works kind of like a RAR. You have to open it first. So the PBO manager allows you to do that. So you're going to want to click Open File. Um, the file that you'll probably want to get is uh, sound underscore weapons. So then this opens up and reveals all these subfolders. So what you're probably going to want to do is just drag all of these to a new folder. So this extracts them for you. So we'll copy all of those to your desktop. This is fine, just ignore that. So now we open this up and we have all these sound effects. Um, but they're .wss files and you can't really play these with much. Uh, you definitely can't play them over TeamSpeak, so you're going to need to convert them. So the second tool that you got is this WSS recorder. So once you extract this, you'll have two files. Um, WSS code for coding files and WSDEC for decode. Um, so the way this works, um, you just drag a WSS file over to it, run it, and it decodes it for you automatically and creates a wave. So now you can actually listen to this file. So unfortunately, I haven't found out a way to do this with multiple files at once. If you do all of them, it just does the last file. But this is still, at least as far as I know, the fastest way to do this. The other way to do it is to use Audacity and convert them one by one, but that takes a bit more time. You can go through, start decoding these files and listening to them. Uh, under this folder, you have a lot of like bullets whizzing by effects. Um, under the firearms folder, you have specific sound effects for each weapon. Some of these don't work. For example, the Mosin. Um, a lot of these sound effects, when you decode them, it'll refuse to play and then if you open in a program like VLC it kind of plays a sound effect but it's there's a bunch of white noise so it sounds it sounds terrible um, so that just happens with some of the sound effects I haven't figured out a way to get around that yet most of them work aside from the Mosin and these sound effects really start to come into their own once you combine them for example you'll notice I have this sound effect here which is a bunch of sound effects <laughs> So that's a combination of the bullet hitting close, the bullet hitting your body, an M4 burst, an M4 single shot. So if you combine those and make your own little sound files, it makes it a bit more natural. So once you've converted your files to waves, you're going to want to drag those all in a folder, get those all organized and labeled like I have right here. So to play these over TeamSpeak, um, you're going to want to get a program called Morphox Pro. This is the program I have right here. I'm going to be honest, I'm not really a fan of this program. I think it has a pretty terrible layout. But I haven't found a better solution to play sounds over TeamSpeak, so this is what I'm using. What you're going to want to do is when you open up the program, you're going to click Advanced. It's going to open up this little dialog. From here, you can press Customize, and you can create a new sound pack. So we'll just go Sound Effects 2 just for a test. And then what you're going to do is add these files. Okay, so here are all my sounds. I can add all of these at once. And then I'd hit Next and Complete, and then... Um, when you do that, you'll get a little new kind of pop-up here with all your sound effects. So you can see here, here's some of my other ones. So the way Morphox Pro works is it plays things over a virtual microphone. This is my actual microphone. Morphox Pro 
will play things over this virtual microphone called Screaming Bee Audio. Everything I say also gets played over this microphone, but you'll notice the sound effects, whatever they may be, only get played over the Screaming Bee Audio because that's how Morphox Pro works. So you see when I play that, it just went over the Screaming Bee. So when you go into TeamSpeak, you're going to want to make sure that is your microphone. So you'll just go into Options, uh, Capture Device, and you'll want to make sure this is Screaming Bee Audio. So once you have that all set up, you are good to go. And anything you play over Morphox Pro will play over TeamSpeak. So if I stop talking and play the sound clip, you can see it triggers my microphone and it goes blue. So a lot of times when I do this, I Alt-Tab um, and just play the sounds from here. It's, it's really easy. But you can also play the sounds while you're in-game by setting up a hotkey. So to do that, you want to go up to Morphox Pro, go into the Preferences, Go down to key mappings, and then go push to push to map sound effects, and you can set them all here. So here's all the sound effects, and you can set a key there. Um, the numpad works pretty well for this because you're typically not using those. So yeah, now you can play sound effects over TeamSpeak. If you want any tips, I would recommend when you play sound effects, typically keep it to one gun. If, if you're playing sounds of a Mosin and a shotgun, people are really going to start to pick up on it pretty fast, especially if you have a big group, because a big group is going to start realizing that they're all hearing the exact same sound, so it works best in small groups. But when you use these, I would just recommend be subtle about it, you know, take your time, don't don't go all out right away, like play these sounds like, you know, maybe five, ten minutes apart from each other. That's when you really start scaring your friends, because that's when it's believable. Hope this tutorial was informative, and you guys learned something. Uh, thanks for watching.